Hello, I'm Sian Chalker, and I have worn many, many hats over the years in Science Olympiad. I started out as a Science Olympiad parent back in 1990. That's when I became aware of Science Olympiad when our oldest son, Alan Chalker, was a freshman in high school and joined the Science Olympiad team. All four of our children were involved in their school years and continue to be involved in various ways to the present day in Science Olympiad. They all recognize what Science Olympiad did for them during their school years and continue to give back to the program so other students can benefit from their experiences. As a Science Olympiad coach then, I started a middle school team in 1996 when our third child, Matthew Chalker, entered middle school. Our coaches had two main goals, to provide the opportunity for students to expand their knowledge in various areas of science and to have students learn to work as a team. The motto then, and we still continue to use is, we strive for excellence. Excellence is not judged by winning. Excellence is judged by trying and doing the best job possible as a team member. I moved on to become part of the technology committee. I co-chaired the committee with Irv Zimmerman back in the early 2000s and became the chair of the technology committee when Irv retired. As technology committee chair, I oversee seven tech events. As you may know, the build events, structures, vehicles, aeronautical, the flight events, and tech, tech design, which includes mission, robotics, roller coaster, electronics, detector building. On the committee, there are over 20 experts in the events, including engineers and alumni. From there, I became part of the rules committee and my involvement at the National Science Olympiad level morphed into head of the rules committee as their chair, chair as I helped proofread and edit the rules prior to their final draft when it went, they went to print. Because I was so familiar with all the rules, I became the contact for the FAQ's clarifications. I send all FAQ clarifications to committee chairs and national event supervisors for answers to questions that are not clear in the rules. Then on to the national tournament. In 2003, I helped co-chair the Ohio State University tournament that was sponsored then. In 2013, I chaired the Wright State University uh, National Science Olympiad Tournament. And then again, in 2017, I was the chair of that tournament at Wright State University. Because I was on national, as chair of the national tournaments, I became a member of the National Advisory Committee and have been a member of that committee for years. Um, as far as Science Olympiad educational opportunities, we have had many, many, I've sponsored many for teams and for coaches. Annually, I've sponsored invitational tournaments since 1998. I've sponsored the Midwest Coaching Academy to train over 300 coaches annually since 2004 in Centerville, Ohio. I've also taught coaches from around the US at the SO Science Olympiad Summer Institute annually since 2002. My actual educational background is in accounting. I have a full-time job for a large brokerage firm. Many people ask, why do I spend so much time with Science Olympiad? Even my license plate has SO in it. I spend so much time on SO because I have seen the benefits for the students over the past 30 years, not only for our four children, but for the thousands of children who have been involved in the program. I've seen students blossom into engineers and scientists because of their experience in participating on a Science Olympiad team. I've seen students realize that it's important to work with others, to share ideas, to research together, and to work as a team. I've seen students find that there is always more to learn. I've seen students learn to not be afraid to try something new. And I've seen students find friendships that last a lifetime beyond their school years. I'd like to introduce Sam Carigliano. He is the CEO of SkySiv and a national corporate partner. He will be sharing how he has adapted his software, especially for SO students, 
and how it helps to prepare them for engineering careers in the digital age. Hi everyone, my name is Sam and I'm the CEO of SkySiv Engineering. Uh, we're the proud sponsor of the Science Olympiad competition and have been for the last three years. Uh, SkySiv is a structural engineering software program that allows you to model and design your structures like boomer levers and towers before you go out and construct them. So we, I started the company uh, five years ago with a business partner of mine uh, and we're glad to be the sponsors of uh, the Science Olympiad competition. So as part of our sponsorship this year, uh, we took it a little bit further and actually built an app for the students to use uh, during the competition. So uh, up until now, all, you could, all use, students would normally use our software for was uh, to design the, the structures before they went out and built them. But this year, given the, uh, the current situation that we're all in, uh, we took it a step further and actually built an app that would test the structure and give you a score rating uh, based on uh, parameters such as the weight of the structure and how much the weight, how much the structure would hold. Uh, we're really excited uh, to be a part of this because uh, this had been something that had never been done before or as far as we had seen uh, on such a scale of being able to roll this out as a national program uh, to so many students uh, in such a short uh, period of time. Uh, so we're really excited to work with the, um, the organisers of Science Olympiad to develop this app and um, the feedback we've been getting from the students has been fantastic. Uh, they're really engaged, they're enjoying learning the software. Um, and for us, it's been such a thrill uh, to see that side of the competition unfold. So we actually started SkySiv um, as students and we really saw that we, we wanted to learn software um, before we entered the workforce. And, and some of the existing software was really difficult and really hard to learn. So, um, we were actually students when we developed, when we started the company. Um, so we have this really deep root in education. So that's why um, partnering with the Science Olympiad program was so exciting for us um, because we believe in education so much and in STEM courses. Um, and we're really passionate about giving back to the student community. Um, we wish we had a competition like this. I know, but I personally wish we had a competition like this when I was growing up or in Australia at least. Um, because it's just such an engaging um, and inspiring competition. Um, students learn so much. They can learn um, you know, software that really prepares them for the industry. And I think that's just so exciting and something that um, is, is far, that Science Olympiad excels far ahead of its, its other competitions. Um, so once again, we're so glad to be part of the program. We hope you guys get all get a lot out of the uh, partnership. Now I'd like to introduce Savar Papadopoulos. Sava is an ESSO alumni. He will share with you where his ESSO experience has led him in the workforce and how he has continued to give back to the Science Olympiad community. Hi everyone, my name is Sava Papadopoulos. I am a senior project engineer at the Green Building Company. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about how Science Olympiad's influenced uh, my choice in major and my choice in career. So I've been involved in Science Olympiad for about 13 years now, since middle school. I started out in middle school as a competitor, uh, went on to high school as a competitor as well, and then moved on to helping run tournaments over the last few years. In middle school, I was just getting involved in Science Olympiad. I had heard about it in sixth grade. Um, one of the seventh grade Science Olympiad students came in and spoke to our class about doing this thing called Science Olympiad. And, you know, it sounded interesting. I was interested in the sciences, um, not particularly in one specific area of it, but I was excited. So me and a few friends signed up and we got into the, uh, our middle school had a class. So we got involved in the class. First few days were talking about which events you wanted to be involved in. As a kid, I'd always been involved. I'd always enjoyed uh, flying and flights and airplanes and that kind of thing. When Right Stuff came up as an event, uh, me and a friend of mine, jumped on the idea and said, all right, let's 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 do right stuff. Um, not realizing that that would lead to a uh, seven, six or seven year obsession with the flying events and uh, years of tireless work, but very enjoyable. Um, so in middle school, I was involved in right stuff and helicopters uh, as they switched out over the years. I became interested in structures and, and construction of things and how things get built and refined to, to work as well as possible. So over the course of the six or seven years that I was involved in as a competitor, um, my team from Long Island went to 
the regional tournaments and then the state tournaments um, and a few invitationals as well towards towards my senior year of high school uh, when invitational tournaments led by colleges were just becoming popular um, and that also transitioned a lot into my interest in running tournaments so i got to see the last year or two of high school these students from college starting to run invitational tournaments and in new york where i'm from the tournaments became something of kind of legend so it became the place to be uh, to go to these invitational tournaments when i was starting to apply to schools um, and ultimately selected going to cornell university i said to my coach i want to be involved in starting a tournament there you know and, and be able to give back and run tournaments that i would have wanted to compete in that became possible very quickly because the first year that i came to cornell I was involved in the first year of the Cornell Invitational Tournament. They, they were already starting up when I got there, and so I jumped in and got involved. I have been, I was a member of Cornell's Invitational Board for the four years that I was in college, uh, starting off as Build Events Director for the first couple of years, which of course was related a lot to my experiences in Build Events before, and then served as President my junior year and then advisor uh, in my senior year. What I found is that managing an invitational is a lot like managing any project, similar to, to a construction project. You have a lot of moving parts. Um, you're working with a lot of different people, a lot of people who may not be involved in Science Olympiad, uh, you know, particularly from, from the university, getting rooms reserved and other logistical aspects ready. I learned a lot about what it is to be able to manage a project, to be able to manage a team uh, and put together an event or project tangentially uh, that is successful. As I got on in my college years, I became incredibly interested in construction management uh, as a specialty and ultimately uh, joined Gilbane Building Company as a project engineer uh, and now senior project engineer. What we do day to day at Gilbane is we're construction managers. We work with architects, engineers, and clients and developers to produce projects and see them to completion successfully. A lot of what I've used from my Science Olympiad career, from my uh, major at Cornell, is not only the, the specifics of knowing what it is that goes into a building so that I can review a drawing and, and, and you know, make sure that it's correct. But the mindset of problem solving and the mindset of team building, working with others, uh, communicating effectively to be able to see a project to completion. Uh, so I'm specifically in the healthcare sector in the New York City office. So we focus on constructing hospital facilities and lab facilities. Uh, which I've done both over the last three years that I've been at the Loom. I get to see, even within construction, I get to see the more technical projects. So we have, you know, advanced uh, heating and air conditioning facilities for hospitals, you know, to more effectively control climate. Uh, with lab facilities, you see more technical aspects. And it's useful with a background in the sciences uh, and engineering to be able to see and understand what it is that the drawings are calling for and what it will take to build whatever it is that we're building. My advice to current and prospective Science Olympiad competitors is really embrace not only the knowledge that you learn in preparing for your events and working on your events, but also the soft skills, the team building aspects, the communication aspects, working together, leading a team. Um, these are skills that are gonna stay with you no matter what your major ends up being. Science Olympiad can lead you down a wide variety of opportunities and a wide variety of career paths. What is common amongst all of them is communication, leadership, team building, being able to work with others. So I really encourage you to focus on that in addition to everything that it is that you do and it's incredible things that you all do in preparing for your events and being able to compete in such a challenging environment. So I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, remember that you are among the best that the world has to offer you, among the best students, the best scientists, the best engineers, 
So continue on what you're doing, best of luck. Science Olympiad offers so much to everyone. I love when parents say they ne have never seen their students so interested in a subject, whether it's studying birds, stars, ecology, electronics, building events, students seem to find their niche. Science Olympiad is not a short-term project in school. It's a long-term project that can carry through a student's lifetime. <music>